I just wanted to do a, a segment of its own on the playing out from the back. Obviously, we've talked about it a lot over the last few weeks that we've been doing more podcasts, like you just mentioned, Matt. The one we did with John McKenzie was purely about that and a, a tactical um, perspective on, on Unai Emery. Today, it's almost that it's not that it didn't work, but it's the first time I think that we've come up against a side, especially at home at least anyway, that the opposition didn't really press us. It was maybe one of the first times I really thought, oh, they've kind of pressed us into something like 25 minutes in or something. So like for Villa to kind of sit back, wait patiently for the opposition to press, when the opposition don't press, you kind of think well, this waiting around at the back doesn't isn't isn't really working because Villa are expected to then go and break the side down and they haven't got the space to do it because Forrest are just going to sit deep and go, no, okay, you do your thing, we don't really care because we're happy to see out this game nil nil. You said John before we came on that they were kind of pressing on Kam- um, Kamara, Louise, and McGinn instead of the centre halves, yeah. and then in the second half, my, me and my dad were talking at half time and he's saying that when they are on the ball, Mings and Concert. They've got, to, they've got to run with the ball and they've got to bring it out further. And straight away in the second half, we came out and scored and Mings or Conso went marauding into the into the opposition half. It's like, oh, yes, okay, we've seen something a bit different this time. So I'm not saying we've got to throw the kind of baby out with the bathwater. If, if the opposition doesn't press, we go, okay, let's just start lumping it long. You've still got to kind of stick to it. But I felt that was the first time where the opposition didn't press us and it was kind of like, okay, um, who knows, what do we do now? Like They're not pressing us, what, what do we do? Is that fair or am I just being stupid and I saw it wrong? No, you were that, that 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 was exactly what it was, and it's this is where it comes down to the players in terms of they've got to figure out for themselves, and as they did today, well, I think uh, it's coming up with solutions to sort of realise right, this is what the um, opposition have done. As I say, it showed us respect because Steve Cooper thought, well, we're not going to press their centre half because Villa in the last five games have won or whatever, or, or you know, yeah. almost all the games, so it's clearly working for him. Instead, we'll press the two. Uh, holding midfielders who always receive the ball off concert and Mings who then play it to Buende instead we'll knock that one out and just let Mings concert have the ball have space with it but they've got to work out what to do with it they've got to work out which ball to play um, and when and if we win it in the middle of the pitch then we can go at them and yeah we're just overcoming different challenges like to win six in seven Premier League games and stay and beat and concede one goal in open play that is remarkable like that's title winning form and it's not just those six games we've done it over 16 games or 17 games now is it I think obviously Thanks, losing man. losing to Arsenal when we should have got something from the game Man City away you know, that end up you know is probably the best sort of team and one of the best teams in Europe um and Leicester, there was just lots of mistakes in that game. So we're doing it to different teams. And I say they're showing us more respect, like they had Danilo and Gibbs White on both of the double pivot, uh, McGinn and uh, Louise today. So Mings and Conso had a bit more of the ball and we're kind of working out uh, how do we kind of play through this instead of using the two, we'll use the wing back. So it's all about sort of learning as we go on. And that's the sort of games like today, I think are more important to us to sort of work out how to overcome different challenges than just smashing different teams and they're not really giving much of a fight. I actually thought Forrest were quite good today, especially in the first half. I know mm. a lot of fans have sort of slated Cooper for his comments after the game saying Villa didn't trouble us and things like that. And I actually agree with some of what he said. I can't lie. I don't think they were that bad. Like that, that wasn't a team that have only won once away all season. And I know they set up to take a point, but they have bits of quality. And I do think they set up well. For example, Traore's goal was gifted on a plate and we've scored obviously with them trying to get an equaliser. So, as much as I give us credit, I also think Forrest did well. But then that's, you know, in a way, well done to Villa because we've overcome that challenge again. And to do it, three wins mm. in a week. Chelsea, Leicester, Forrest, all different challenges, two away games in there as well. So, yeah, with, that's what's for me with more confidence because we're doing it in different ways rather than just doing one set thing of playing through one player or doing it this way. We're doing it different different ways and different styles as well, which is... Um, yeah, that's what's giving me more confidence going into next season, especially. Yeah, I agree to an extent on Forest that there's still moments throughout the game where they like, put a ball straight out for a throw in or blast one to the whole end, and I go, "That's a crap team, really. Like, that's, that's a poor Premier League team." Yeah. They they contained us and probably not naive to, to play too open or play too high because yeah. they they know we're getting behind them. But yeah. I just thought that I probably expected them to be. I say I say expected them to be more combative. They actually were <laughs> flying in, flying into tackles, <laughs> but I probably expected them to be a little bit braver. We scored in every single game. I think it was a I think it was a bit of a, a, a foolish a foolish ploy in the end, thinking that they could come for a nil nil or come for a one nil. I think they probably need to offer a little bit more. But I, I get your point that that it's not for it's not for teams to come to Villa Park and play open and go toe to toe if they think they're gonna get turned yeah. over properly. They 
probably should have done more and be more brave, I think, in possession. But the way they set up, I just think that it's a good lesson for Villa because in most of the games, our build-up and how we've been playing out, teams have struggled to sort of cope with it. And it almost seems quite obvious what we're going to do. But today, mm-hmm. there was a different sort of um, sort of passages to play, like a contra and Mings. I thought we were a bit slow on the ball at, at times, but that's because they're learning that, oh, all of a sudden, John McGinn and uh, Louise, or it would have been Kamara instead of McGinn, all of a sudden, there's two players on them and they're not pressing us, but, you know, what do we do sort of thing. Sounds quite basic, but then it's it's kind of working out for them, you know, how to by press, um, bypass, sorry, that uh, that sort of challenge and get the ball into the final third, which we did on occasions well. I thought Moreno, for me, was probably man of the match. I think Mings as well was, coloss- was colossal again. Concert didn't really put a foot wrong. The whole back four, really, but Moreno gave us that outlet. But I think it's more of a case of, OK, well, now we know that we're good. We've got to be able to be... Um, to adapt to the different situations as well. Like Brighton do it really well. Man City obviously do it really well with Guardiola. But those players are so intelligent that they know how to get out of those situations when an opponent is setting traps across the pitch and stuff. And that's what we have to do. So up until now, most teams have just pressed the centre-backs and the fans have been like, oh God, what's going on? But today there hasn't been much of that because they didn't do that. They pressed the midfielders instead and we didn't lose the ball. We're going to have to work out how to play differently under Emery to what we have so far. That's only a good thing for next season as well. With the exception of Brennan Johnson, who was trying to do half a press on his own a little bit. I don't know whether you're more nervous about when... Mings and Concer have been given the ball in tight spaces and being pressed, or whether I was more nervous today when they got all the time in the world, <laughs> what they were going to do yeah. with it. You know what I mean? Like I say, it's, it's a different challenge, isn't it? And that's where you, rather than your defensive midfielders coming and starting things off, they were like hidden. You know, you couldn't really see them in there because yeah. they were they were surrounded. So it's asking your two centre halves to, to to start things off. And I thought I did. I thought they did okay. You know, there's a, a couple of times where I think there's a pass in the second half where I think Conza found found Ramsey. Oh, you, like we've said, we've said before, there's going to be different challenges each week, and the only way Villa are going to learn to adapt is by coming up against those challenges. Yeah. And we've won the game today, and it wasn't it wasn't particularly pretty at times. And you know, I'm glad glad we did get that second goal because it gives the gives the result a better complexion. It puts us in positive goal difference. I don't know. It's uh, I, I can feel myself getting greedy, thinking winning's yeah. not enough. You know, when and when did when did we get these delusions of grandeur that winning wasn't enough? No, I don't <laughs> just want to. I don't just want to win. I want to be kind of dazzled. You're like, well, chill out a bit, Matt. You know, you. you just look at the table. That should dazzle you enough, really. It's nice to win in different ways, though, because like you said, it, like you said earlier, John, we can't just go. Well, we're always going to play this way against the opposition, and they will play this way against us. Okay, so we just rinse and repeat all the time. Eventually, someone will work us out, and Steve Cooper, Cooper goes, "Well, if we press the centre backs, they'll do this to us and cut us apart. So let's try something different." And like we said, like you said earlier, credit to Forest in that sense that they did set up in a different way, and that that did start for us. It did work because I was fully expecting. In, like the whole first half pretty much that this is going to be one of those games where maybe the run comes to an end and Forrest nicks something and we come on here after and go that's really annoying that's really frustrating Forrest have done a job on us effectively because they've stopped playing us the way we want to play but to still have that kind of control over, over the opposition and over the game in the long run and to be able to tweak things at half time you knew that Villa weren't going to be as bad well, not that they were bad, but they weren't going to be the, the same in the second half. And to come out and score straight away, I was like, oh, okay, they know what they're doing. They, they've tried something different now and, and everything's fine. There was a couple of long balls from Mings maybe in the first half. That I thought, oh no, we're kind of reverting back to type a little bit. We're, we're, get, we're trying to force it. We're trying to rush it. Like, let's just stick to the plan. Try a few little tweaks. Don't just go back to route one because it currently isn't working. Just have patience and hopefully in, in time, as in the next 60 minutes or so, it'll all kind of sort itself out. They had a good low block. They they weren't giving away many chances and we were not struggling at the time, but you could tell that if that game kept going on and it got 60 minutes, the crowd would start to, you know, get on, not on the players' backs, but get frustrated when we couldn't play those passes that we want to be playing and Mings would be going long as he was, um, which is fine. Again, it's just them trying to work out how to get over what Forrest were doing. But over the next few games, it'd be interesting because when we play teams like uh, Newcastle, Brentford, Tottenham, all those teams are around us. So you must think like they're not going to be playing like Forrest and trying to negate us. Instead, they're going to play their own way, which will allow us to play the way that we have been playing under Emery, basically, and getting good results. So I'm kind of thinking, well, today was a good test because it allows us to do something different and the players will learn from it. So that's good for next season. But because we want to get Europe this season, we've got to try and beat uh, you know Brentford, Newcastle, Spurs, whoever it may be, Liverpool, and they're going to play the way that they always play because they are a top team. You know, they're all top teams in their own sort of in their own right, and they're not going to be thinking, "Oh, 
you know, we're going to set up to stop Villa. They're going to set up to beat Villa, if that makes sense. So mm. hopefully we can just play as we've been playing before today. And it's been all sort of like very easy on the eye in terms of uh, we've done it again. Whereas today was a bit of a different sort of feel to it. It was almost like a we're going to have to beat Forest by combating what they're trying to do to us. Um, so yeah, hopefully in the next few weeks, we won't be tested in different ways as we were today. But again, yeah, really good lesson and to come away with three points and a 2-0 win, being comfortable with it as well. You know, they Did they have any chances? I don't think they did. Also, let's not forget, Matt, this is a, a, a week of three games, something that Villa haven't done for, for a long time. Not that I can remember anyway. It will have happened at some point, but three games that we've had to put a lot into and we've got nine points as our reward. So if there are moments where things are maybe a little bit sloppy or, or not quite up to the kind of 10th gear that we're used to, it's maybe taken it out of the players a little bit this week. That It's been pretty much the whole, the same first 11 all the way through those three games and it's it's taken a bit out of them. It's now we've got Newcastle is, is a full week away. Brentford is a full week away after that. It's time to reset, time to go back to Bodymore, work out a plan specific for that game and, and kind of go again, to quote Paul Lambert. God, quoting Paul Lambert. <laughs> 